In the fall of 1970, there was a good amount of uncertainty about what the new academic year would bring for students, faculty, and administrators, not only at DePaul, but at campuses across the nation. The previous academic year had ended in turmoil and unrest following the U.S. bombing of Cambodia and the shootings at Kent State University. At DePaul, anti-war demonstrations and student strikes broke out on the Lincoln Park campus and traveled to the downtown campus, and the 1970 commencement exercises were interrupted by a group of students calling for peace. The summer of 1970 at DePaul began with Rockfest, a free event organized by the Student Strike Committee that was held on the hill next to the Schmidt Academic Center, or SAC. 14 bands played for crowds estimated to be over 6,500 people. Everyone kept the fest peaceful. A DePaulia editorial referred to Rockfest as a spiritual inspiration not to be diminished. By the start of the 1970-71 academic year, the broad-based student support for demonstrations and protests from the year before had dwindled quite a bit, but the impact of the student movement was still evident. DePaul had just established the first university senate, which now included students and staff, in addition to faculty and administrators, so that each group had a representative voice in the university's affairs. Flemmie Wilson, the new president of the Student Activity Council, changed the group's name to the Student Government Association to signify the new era of student representation in university governance. The vice president of the Student Government Association, Tom Myers, expressed his views about the campus climate that fall in a DePaulia interview, saying that what's going on seems to be a reappraisal of last year and the role of the student in affecting change in society. One example of that student impact was the breakfast program that was founded by students James Hammonds and Michael Walters. The program served free meals to Lincoln Park neighborhood children. The university provided a space to host the breakfast in the basement of Burn Hall, but DePaul students organized the program and raised funds for the meals by hosting events like a song fest, a car wash, and a student faculty basketball game. Some of DePaul's longer standing student traditions continued for the 1970 to 71 academic year too like the annual push ball contest, the freshman versus upperclassmen game, in which two teams face off to push a six foot 50 pound ball through goalposts at opposite ends of a very muddy field, or kangaroo court, a mock court to sentence freshmen with things like shaving cream pies to the face and wearing silly outfits, and signpost, a freshman orientation guide with information on campus life, school policies, activities and societies made for students by students. The 1970 signpost guides students on getting with the jargon with a list of DePaul terms like the pit, described in signposts as the brickwork lounge with sunken floor lit by funny looking light bulbs situated at the entrance to Schmidt Center, the scene of conversation, guitar strumming and general socializing or Link, the TV lounge and display area connecting the Liberal Arts Building, Science Hall East, and Schmidt, which advertises school events, productions, and dances, and Kelly's, the campus pub on Webster Avenue. The Kingston Mines Company store also opened that year as a hangout geared to DePaul students, with coffee, food, meeting space, and an evening entertainment schedule that featured comedy, music, and poetry readings. And downtown in the Lewis Center, home to law, commerce, music, and drama students, the cafeteria was the hub of student activity. Two new buildings opened for students on the Lincoln Park campus during the 1970 to 71 academic year. A six-story residence hall on Clifton Avenue, which was DePaul's first permanent student residence and the Stewart Center, a student union on Seminary Avenue that included spaces like a cafeteria, recreation facilities, a bookstore, student organizational offices, and a religious service area. 
In athletics, the 1971 season was not the best year for DePaul basketball, however. The Blue Demons only won eight games and lost 17. It was a tough schedule and a long season for coach Ray Meyer and his team, but a few players stood out, including Joe Meyer, who finished third on the university's all-time scoring list, and Ed Good, who recorded the highest single game total of the season, scoring 34 points. In the spring of 1971, the band Chicago played a special show at Alumni Hall. The band was founded at DePaul a few years earlier in 1967 by music students Walt Perizader, Lee Lochnane, and James Panko, along with four other local musicians that were friends with the DePaul trio. There was a full house at Alumni Hall for the show. Perizader thanked many of his professors at DePaul for playing a role in his music career, and the event raised $5,000 to set up a music scholarship fund at DePaul. The academic year wrapped up as it typically does with commencement. The June 1971 ceremonies were held downtown at the Auditorium Theater. The high point for many in attendance that year was the presentation of an honorary degree and the St. Vincent de Paul Award to gospel singer Mahalia Jackson, who sang for graduates in what would be one of her last public appearances. These highlights from the 1970 to 71 academic year at DePaul are documented in the records, papers, photographs, and memorabilia held in DePaul Special Collections and Archives. If you have questions about these collections or about university history, or if you want to share your own memories and perspective on your time at DePaul, please contact us.